we are now going to learn how to measure the quantity of heat and we are going to arrive at the concept of specific heat capacity you know that heat is the energy transfer that happens due to temperature differences so here i have a hotter object higher temperature so the molecules are jiggling around very rapidly that is a lower temperature object so the molecules are jiggling around quite slowly if i now allow energy transfer between these two because of temperature differences what is going to happen you're going to have from the hotter object to the colder object you're going to have some energy getting transferred now this energy flow is what we call heat so how do i find out how much is the quantity of heat for that you have to think about what will this heat do well this heat will increase the internal energy of this object and when it does that the temperature of this object will increase always not always but quite often okay there are, for example situations like melting of ice where the temperature does not increase but the energy that you are supplying right the heat that you are supplying goes towards breaking bonds but many many situations the energy that you are supplying the heat that is coming in is going to increase the temperature of this colder object so how much will the temperature increase delta t we can say is final temperature minus initial temperature of this object so that is the increase in the temperature of the colder object well that is obviously going to be proportional to the heat right more heat comes in more will be the temperature increase so i can say delta t must be proportional to the quantity of heat coming in ah so can i then say whenever some quantity of heat comes temperature increase will be the same think about it if you have a smaller object and a larger object you have less number of atoms and more number of atoms think about what is temperature temperature represents the average kinetic energy per atom or per molecule right so temperature is talking about per atom how much energy this is telling you how much energy is coming in now it's going to be divided equally amongst all the atoms so if you double the number of atoms then each atom will get only half of the amount of energy coming in so the temperature increase will be half of what would have happened earlier so more number of atoms will mean less temperature increase so you can say temperature increase is inversely proportional to the number of atoms but number of atoms here of course i can count it but in general number of atoms is not a good term to use so we are going to use something that represents number of atoms what would be a good way to talk about the number of atoms mass is a good way right so you can say because more number of atoms will mean more mass directly related so number of atoms instead of talking about number of atoms i can use mass so i can say that the increase in temperature is inversely proportional to the mass of the object mass of the object because the mass will tell you how many atoms are there so more number of atoms less will be the temperature increase more mass less will be the temperature increase you can say if i have 7 grams right for each gram i have to have some temperature increase so that means each gram will get only 1/7 suppose i had 20 grams each gram will get only 1/20th so you can say that the increase in temperature is inversely proportional to the mass so you know that the increase in temperature is directly proportional to the quantity of heat coming in it is inversely proportional to the mass if we combine these two together you can say delta t is proportional to q by m the heat coming in divided by the mass i can of course reverse this i can write q is directly proportional to m into delta t m into delta t of course we can replace the proportionality with a constant the constant usually we use the letter s so we write heat q is equal to the mass into that constant s into delta t why s because s is called the specific heat capacity of that material now that object right it is made up of some material let us say it was an iron uh, rod you can have a bigger iron rod you can have a smaller iron rod but big and small iron rod that is already included in the mass but the fact that it is iron and not copper Ah, that is what that specific heat capacity is going to tell us. So it is specific to the material. So specific heat capacity depends on the material that you are using. So Q, the quantity of heat that is entering this object, 
right? The quantity of heat that is entering this object, you can find that out by looking at how much the temperature has increased and of course by looking at the mass and each material will also have its own specific heat capacity. So mass into specific heat capacity into delta T. So ms delta T, very very important formula, Q equal to ms delta T. So what is the specific heat capacity of different objects? Well obviously they are going to be different and the units, think about this, heat is going to be, it's just energy right, so it will be in joules, mass is in kilograms, delta T will be in either Kelvin or degree Celsius, so specific heat capacity will be joules per kilogram Kelvin or joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So that will be the units for, SI units for specific heat capacity. Different substances, it doesn't matter whether I have 1 kg of it or 10 kgs of it, different substances will have different values for specific heat capacity. The actual object, the size of it doesn't matter, the size has already got included in the mass. Okay, aluminium has a specific heat capacity of 910 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, copper has 386 Okay, in this SI units, mercury has 140, cooking oil has 1965 and so on. Notice water, oh my god, such a massive amount of specific heat capacity, 4186. Water it turns out is one of the objects with the highest specific heat capacity. Okay, so water has 4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius, huge specific heat capacity. Look at mercury and water massive difference. In fact, if you look at aluminium and water, again you can see that copper and water, you can see that water has a huge specific heat capacity. By the way, this plays a big role. That's why water takes a long time to increase its temperature. So in summer, the sea, the sea water does not heat up very easily, whereas the land heats up a lot. Why? Because water has a huge specific heat capacity. And ice, has almost half, right? You can see that exactly half, almost half of water. So ice has less heat capacity, specific heat capacity compared to water, almost half of it. Whereas water has a huge specific heat capacity. So what do we do with the specific heat capacity? Once you know the specific heat capacity of an object and you know the temperature increase and the mass of the object, you can easily calculate how much heat has flowed into that object. So remember Q equal to M S delta T. We know that the quantity of heat that is flowing into an object can be calculated using this formula Q equal to M S delta T, where M is the mass of the object, S is the specific heat capacity of the material and delta T is the temperature increase that happens because this heat is flowing in. But what exactly is the unit for heat? Well, heat is just simply energy, so that means the SI unit of heat must be the same as the SI unit for energy, which is joules, and that's what we have been using, but that is a modern way of thinking. Long time ago, when the first experiments on heat was done, people thought of heat as something very different. So they used a different unit for heat, calorie. The short form is C-A-L. What is a calorie? One calorie is the amount of heat that must be supplied to increase the temperature of 1 gram of water by 1 degree Celsius. So let us look at this definition a little more carefully. So basically, if I took 1 gram of water and I basically try to look at its temperature initially, let us say it was 14.5 degree Celsius and I now supply heat to it. And this heat that I am supplying increases the temperature by 1 degree. So now the temperature becomes 15.5 degree Celsius. So the temperature increased by 1 degree Celsius. Suppose this was 1 gram of water whose temperature increased by 1 degree Celsius. Then the amount of heat that you have supplied is 1 calorie, 1 calorie. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the specific heat capacity of water is exactly by definition 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius. Why? Because this is telling you that to increase the temperature of 1 gram by 1 degree Celsius, how much heat is required? 1 calorie. So that must be exactly the specific heat capacity of water. So in these units, okay, not SI units, but in terms of calories, 
the specific heat capacity of water turns out to be by definition exactly 1 calorie per gram degree Celsius. Okay. Now, usually we want kilograms. Well, if you want kilograms, that means you are not talking about 1 gram, you are talking about 1000 grams. For 1 gram, it takes 1 calorie. For 1000 grams, it is going to take 1000 calories. So, you can write 1000 calories per kilogram degree Celsius. In calories, the specific heat capacity of water is not an approximate number, it is exact because that is how a calorie is defined. Okay, that is the way we define the calorie. So, 1000 calories per kilogram degree Celsius. Okay, what, but calorie is just talking about heat, right? But you know that heat, SI unit is joule. So, there must be a conversion factor. What is the conversion factor? Joule did a lot of experiments to show that heat is just a form of energy. So, through these experiments, he showed that one calorie was exactly equal to 4.186 joules. Not exactly, approximately equal to 4.186 joules. So, how much is one calorie? 4.186 joules. So, whenever you are given so many x calories, very easy to convert it into joules, multiply it by 4.186. That's all. So, with this information, you can write the specific heat capacity of water in joules. How much will it be? Let us look at this. So, 1 calorie is 4.186 joules, right? We want it in kilograms. So, therefore, I take the 1000 calories multiplied by 4.186, I will get 4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. So, that is the specific heat capacity of water, but in SI units, 4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius. This conversion factor is very important from calories to joules, 1 calories 4.186 joules because a lot of questions will be given in terms of calories just multiply it by 4.186 so that you get the answer in joules which is the SI unit and for heat capacity of water specific heat capacity of water it's very easy to remember one calorie per gram degree Celsius or thousand calories per kilogram degree Celsius and from that you can get it in joules just by multiplying by 4.186 so therefore in joules it will be specific heat capacity of water will be 4186 4186 joules per kilogram degree Celsius.